Um, we're going to go a little way down boxing's memory lane now because it's uh, almost exactly a decade since Prince Nassim Hamed's one and only defeat, and what a defeat it was to Marco Antonio Barrera. We've been speaking to the legendary trainer, Emmanuel Stewart, to tell us of his experiences with the Prince. And the same Hamed had a kind of free spirit style in the ring, and to some degree, very colorful and arrogant, but not so bad outside as people would think. In a lot of the ways when I was with him, he was very focused still as a boxer. And what happened in the case with Naz, he had so much talent that in preparation for the Barrera fight, he just took Barrera lightly. And if Naz had a train with the same focus and the intensity he had, Early in his career, I believe he would have beat Barrera. I think his punching power, his elusiveness, uh, instincts was just too much. But it was just a case of someone not being prepared for a fight mentally. And Barrera now is 10 seconds away from victory, surely. Left hook from Barrera, on to Hamed's chin once again. Hamed's on his toes, and a straight left from Barrera. And Barrera celebrates. Hamed knows he's defeated. Unfortunate for Nez, he never fought Barrera again. But Nassim's attitude of uh, being confident and and hands down and punching from all angles, I never tried to refine it because it was successful. A perfect example, in the last fight that Barrera had, I had did to HBO broadcast on it. And after the fight, my fellow commentator, Larry Merchant, says, Emmanuel, uh, Barrera looked very good. Say that you know the next fight will be with your boy. You know, I mean, how do you feel? I said, Larry, I was very impressed with him tonight. I said, we have our hands full. So I get back to camp, and I talk to Naz. I say, Naz, I say, what did you think of the fight? I found he didn't even watch the fight, and I had instructed HBO to send tapes of the fight. So when I spoke to him about a few days later, he still hadn't saw him, and I and I asked. HB, I called HBO, I said, and you send the tape? He says, yes, we sent it. And so I said, where's the uh, tape at? He says, I didn't get any tape. I say, I saw here that they said, you received and signed. He went in the bedroom and got it out. I said, why come you guys haven't been looking at this? Because, you know, he was with him, like, all the time. They were still showing tapes of him being knocked out by Junior Jones, you know, five years ago. So this is what it, I, this was the problem I had. I said, that's not the same fighter now. So you, they're showing you the worst. I want you to prepare for the best. And this is the way he's looking today, and he didn't want to see it. So that went all the way through the whole camp. But I never, never, never tried to change his style. I just wanted him to have good quality boxing. But Nas just didn't have the proper preparation for the fight. But for his talent and excitement, oh, my God. That's the legendary trainer, Emmanuel Stewart, who's uh, looking back to Nassim Hamid's one and only defeat to the great Marco Antonio Barrera, who's still fighting. He's only fought. <laughs> he, um, he fought about six weeks ago, and uh, he fought, he fought uh, Mia two years ago. And trust me, he is right back in contention because there's a couple of guys fighting around now who he fought five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago. He could find himself in some big fights. Don't even rule out in 18 months, if he has a win, a big fight with him. These are called mega fights by Oscar De La Hoya. This, mm. is, what, this, is, the, this is the big business now the big buzzword mega fights don't even rule out if a Barrera beats say a, a guy called Morales who fought Madonna at the weekend don't even rule out a, ma- a rematch trust me it could mm. happen stranger things have happened on the way to the MGM Grand Ballroom um, Mike Costello <laughs> that's the truth Mike, Mike. Mike Costello I don't know what's, what's your overriding sort of impression of the career of Prince Nassim Hamed did he fulfil his potential I don't think he did. And, and that's a debate that we could have Oof. long into the night because when he lost that night, there were so many people who were smiling, both within the British media and among the British Why? boxing community generally. Because who this knows? was a man who was as loathed as he was loved because of his behaviour at press conferences, in interviews, his behaviour with fans sometimes, and even his mocking of opponents in the ring. Yeah, but Muhammad Ali did all that, didn't he? Did it far and, worse. And, 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 and he was hated as well. He was hated and loved, not perhaps in, in equal proportions. But Nassim Hamid once said something very similar to Muhammad Ali, that about all these people around here screaming at me and, and producing this hostile atmosphere, I don't care whether they come to see me win or to come to see me get knocked out as long as the checks don't bounce. 
Wow. Yeah. Well, what's absolutely. he doing now? Well, he's, uh, he's living on a golf course, one of the golf courses surrounding London somewhere. He's playing a bit of golf, but he's not... Uh, I think he's using a buggy a lot because he's carrying a lot of weight. I was going to say, he's a big lad he's, now. He's involved with a couple of fighters, working with Frank Warren, of course, who was his promoter throughout most of his career, not the last few fights. And he's kind of getting back into the boxing. I don't think he's... He's still quite an influential figure inside the Yemeni community in Sheffield, and that's the largest Yemeni community outside of the Yemen. So uh, he's still active, but he's fairly low profile because he had, you know, he went to prison briefly, and he still keeps his head fairly low. He was, he left the scene. I think he was found. Left the scene of, uh, right. of an accident. Yeah. yeah okay. Oh, we're talking. Well, it's five.